Hello, welcome to Country Stitchers. Hi to our floss friends. Hello. Hi. I'm Liz. Hi, I'm Deb. And it is a lovely Tuesday afternoon here. Yes. And we finally got a little time together. We have done what we always do, which is talk more than we do anything else. Yeah. <laughs> now we have a little window to do our video with our floss friends. Yeah. Yeah, but we wanted to stop by and hang out with you for a little bit. Um, we really wanted to also talk about our upcoming fun events that we have planned. Yes. And um, you're working on I am working a piece. on what's going to be a pillow for the model for our day treat yeah. at HodgePodge. Just about yeah, done. Yeah, that's great. And it's on uh, 14 count Ada, a vintage country mocha. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing mine on 32 count linen, vintage country mocha. Um, so to explain this, Again, we are going to go to HodgePod, which is in Strasburg. It's one of our local LNSs. Yep. And we are going to have a meet and greet on registration day, which is Tuesday, September 24th. Liz and I will be there. That's when registration opens for the day treat. Um, you can stop by and visit us and, and pay for your uh, kit. You can choose either Ada or Linen and hang out with us for a little bit, shop around, and then and that will be from 11 to 3 is when we'll be there. Yep. And uh, then the actual day treat happens Tuesday, October 29th. And on that day, we'll meet at the shop around 10 in the morning. Um, Marsha's going to close to the public. And we'll have time to shop and visit yep. and also eat because she'll have some goodies there. And I don't like to miss a meal. <laughs> so, <laughs> so We'll hang out at the shop until around 12, and then we're going to head over to the library in Strasburg where we have the room reserved, and we get to just stitch and have a fun day treat over there. Um, the registration is open to the people that physically stop by on the 24th first, and then if it doesn't get filled, Marsha will take phone calls after that. So if you can't make it on the 24th to come see us, it doesn't mean you're you're completely out. You know, there there is a chance that you might still be able to make a phone yeah. call and, and get in. Um, so anyway, the day treat will be fun. That's October 29th, and uh, we'll be able to have the library from like t uh, 12 until three or four in the afternoon. And you can bring your own lighting if you'd like, because Marsha did say that the room is a you have overhead lights, but it's a it's not a room where we have the outside natural light yeah. coming in Just so if you have a light that you like Marsha's bringing one we might bring one think um, of your local library and yeah it's probably okay for reading but if you're gonna do any kind of needlework you might want your extra yeah or just pretend it's like back in the old days <laughs> <laughs> light a candle yeah <laughs> um, so anyway that is really that's gonna be a lot of fun that's why we're working on this piece ahead of time because we wanted to hopefully get it done so we can show you it finished yes um, it it doesn't have a lot of colors in it, but it's just so pretty and autumnal. It's beautiful. Uh, you'll be getting full skeins of the thread and your fabric in the pattern. Um, and the cost of the day treat is $30. Yep. All right. Um, and then we will be at Stitches Unlimited, uh, which is in Lancaster at another LNS that we have. And we'll be having a meet and greet there on October 17th. Um, we will be there from 1 to 4, and Pat is having a trunk show of Kathy Barrick and also um, Teresa. Teresa is, Miller. Is, Teresa is also going to be there. Um, yep. And Teresa is from Teresa's Primitive Treasures, and she'll have all of her things set up at the same time, and we'll be there, so it's going to be a crowded shop, yep. but a lot of fun. So if you can make it to Stitches Unlimited on October 17th, that would be a lot of fun to see you, to yes, see you would. there. And so. we know, by the way, I, I don't want to sound like we don't know this, we know we are blessed to have two shops yeah. in our area. And there's three, yeah. like Deb pointed out that um, uh, Strawberry Sampler isn't that far from us. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was talking to Barb after the Guild meeting on Saturday, mm -hmm. and she even mentioned um, Just a Thought. I think is the name of the, or no, just cross stitch. The shop that's near her in Phoenixville, there's another shop. So one of these days, we're going to try to see if we can How long would it take uh, us to connect. get there? It's about an hour. That's it? Mm -hmm. yes. Really? Mm -hmm. 
Wouldn't it be fun? Ooh, I'm, I'm already working on this. I, I haven't <laughs> told her till now, but she doesn't know. But we might get out to another shop. So there's wow. there's several in the, the local area. Nice. Um, cool. So yes, we are blessed and we love being able to go touch and feel. And yes. It, I noted in our uh, last video that for us, that's like going to a candy shop. Definitely. <laughs> Better than a candy shop. <gasps> Why don't they sell chocolate at a stitching oh. shop? I mean, you have to make sure that you're cleaning your fingers before you're oh, touching the fabric. There are but... several types of chocolate that exactly. go straight in the mouth. There you go. M&M's being one of them. I hate to just point that out. They're made right up in E-Town. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, some very close friends of my parents when I was little, um, Aunt Nancy, she worked there. And Uncle Charlie was my dad's best man at uh -huh. their wedding. And so they were aunt and uncle to us from the time I ever showed up. Anyway, Aunt Nancy, if she knew we were coming to Pennsylvania, which didn't happen often with dad in the military, she would come to the house and she would have like a brown grocery bag filled with all the fun size and full size things that came out of the E-Town factory. Oh, really? Oh my word. Oh, that cool. rode with us in the car all the way back to home, wherever we were coming from. Isn't it neat how like around Halloween, we always found out which house had the real big candy bars, like the full size candy bars. Okay. And you always went there first because you didn't want them to run out. Okay. You know? <laughs> now see, I didn't have that. Oh. I'm not sure how I would have found out that, but um, I don't know that I actually even ever got a full size candy no? bar when I was a kid. Hmm. Now we had some neighbors, the ladies would cook. Did I was gonna say, did you have anybody do your, your caramel apples and hand those out or your pop, your popcorn balls? Popcorn balls I got. That's I don't funny. think I ever got a caramel apple. No. No. Ugh, so much fun. But I did get I uh, did get um, popcorn balls. Yeah. And what was it? one time we got something. I mean, we had a really cool development where we lived, Lakewood. Okay. Wooded all over. Everybody has yeah. at least an acre of ground, but man, people would go all out at Halloween. Fog machines, <laughs> scary music. The um, the local fire company comes in and they're throwing candy out and um, just playing spooky music. I mean, it is just so much fun. Everybody walks like you you walk around the whole place and. You're, tr you know, you come up to somebody and you're trying to figure out who it is and <laughs> where they live. It is, just, it was the best. Oh, that was so much fun. We used to go when we were in the service around on the base to our, you know, our, our neighborhood. But, okay. Um, we did several other neighborhoods growing up too. I think maybe the reason that wasn't something I remembered or got used to is because with all the moving around, yes, we never really yeah. connected that much with everybody in the neighborhood if we were there for halloween that was a good thing <laughs> yep we also did this thing that was really fun um it was called ghosted so at some point in october somebody could at any time in october show up at your doorstep and ring the doorbell and leave and you had a, a gift on your front porch you know usually a basket of whatever goodies for the season then there was a paper ghost in your basket that you had to then hang on a front window of your house so that everybody knew that house was already ghosted. Once you were ghosted, you had to ghost somebody else. And it was so much so fun. So ghosting meant somebody gave you... They gave you the secret. Like, we would have to sneak up to a house without being caught, get the goodies on the front porch, ring the doorbell, and run. And, and you left your ghost in you place left of the your, goodies. Yes, okay. you left your ghost, you left your goodies. And then that way, you know, you, you hang up the paper ghost. Um, like when they gave you your basket, they gave you an extra paper ghost to hang up at your house. But then when you're passing on and you're the one then ghosting someone else, there's also a paper ghost in that basket that they can hang up. And that meant it was your turn then. You had to go out and ghost somebody else. Okay. And that was so much fun. The kids looked forward to that. You know, we always knew in October at some point we're going to get ghosted. <laughs> and um, it, it was just so much fun. It sounds oh like Oh, my gosh. It. I mean, people would leave mums on the front porch or like a basket of like some candies and some, I don't know, different things for the holiday, uh -huh. different things to put up in your windows yeah. or, or whatever. It was really, really cool. Pumpkins. I'd never heard of that before. Yeah, it's really fun. That is neat. And then when you go to ghost somebody else, because you dress all in black, you know, <laughs> and you get to run around the neighborhood and, and um, try to ghost somebody without them knowing, figuring you out. Yeah. yeah. One time we just made it to the bush bushes and they opened the front door 
and they of course saw their goodies so but they didn't see us and we're in the bushes <laughs> looking at them stuck thinking oh no we're gonna get caught and they just yell out there thank you <laughs> <laughs> whomever you might be it was so much fun that is fun oh i forgot to show you what i'm working on i started my um sampler september so i started this sampler it is uh, barbara anna design and it is called all creatures great and small um I decided to not stitch the outer border, like the, the greenery. I'm just gonna do everything else. And I am doing this also on Vintage Country Mocha. It's 40 count, so I'm stitching one over two. I forgot to show you that too. I'm not gonna do the, Vintage. I'm not gonna do this border, but I'm just okay. gonna do everything else. Neat. That border didn't really do anything for me. Didn't speak to me. So that's 40, huh? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, over two. Where'd you buy that fabric? Good question. That's a... You know what? That was also a question. I think people wanted to know where you got your Ada that's... that's um, Vintage. Vintage. That was HodgePodge. Yes, you got that at HodgePodge. Yeah. And she has quite a selection yeah. of Ada that's uh, over dyed. Because it's actually modeled. It, mm -hmm. it, it has modeling to it. Yeah. It's really, really pretty. It's um, very, let me see if I can This is the one, hey Liz, they actually call for it on here. 40 count vintage country mocha. Okay. Yeah. So, so you can see it there. And that says, this is linen from Zweigart. And I can show you the, the reverse side is not. Um, so you can see that I wonder if I got it at Salty Yarns. Just plain. But the front is definitely. Yeah. Um, I just was curious. Yeah. Um, I still, most of the time when you and I have been doing 40 counts, it hasn't been quite as modeled like that. It's been on some of the more right. uh, solid creams mm -hmm. or neutrals. Mm -hmm. That's very pretty. Yeah, it is pretty. And the colors, um, it calls for either Anchor or DMC. So I picked a lot of the DMC, but I am substituting some uh, over dyes for, for just a few of the colors. So it has a really pretty color palette. I have not looked at this yet. And I think I mentioned I picked this up. I did. Did you go through it? Yeah. Oh, am yeah. I going to be excited? Yeah. I do think that this one bird on the front is really adorable. Um, but that's the ornament issue. And I have to see if I can find that bird. It's so much fun. They are so much fun to look through. They are. And I don't know, are they still doing the put your favorite recipe thing in here? Did you notice? I know. Isn't that fun? It is I, fun. I even keep my older magazines because of that. I found some really good recipes. I actually found a recipe in here that was for, um, for bread one year. Um, and it was adaptable if you used a bread machine. Oh. And it made cheddar bread. Oh. Oh boy, I did that That's every holiday after mm. that, that I had a, a bread maker. My bread maker mm. bit the dust. I needed to get a new one. I haven't done it yet. Um, you know the fin that goes down in the bread maker that does the kneading? Yeah. It's coated in a Teflon and for some reason it just started to peel on me oh and it got to the point where i couldn't you know use it anymore but yeah um it didn't like all the action i guess <laughs> it was tired you wore it out i did oh that i'll tell you that bread maker sat on my counter and it wasn't just for show i used it often i remember matt's mom had one and when we were in uh, high school and I think she must have used that thing almost every day. Yeah, that's, I did. Yeah. I mean, obviously with just the two of us, we didn't eat the whole loaf every day, but it was at least three times a week I made a loaf of bread. Yeah. Yeah. I never did quite get to the point where I tried things like um, making the, the dough for bagels or the dough for uh, pizza or something like that. Okay. I never tried doing different types of dough. I have a good pizza dough recipe I can give you. Do you? It's very easy too. <laughs> Most ago, when I was in hair school, 
and I would go home with my friend who was also in hair school with me. Uh -huh. Every Friday, her mom would make homemade pizza. Okay. And so, oh my God, it was so good. <laughs> uh, so Friday every Friday, I would go home. Day. Yeah. Well, when the girls, I, this is what what else is unbelievable about us getting together today is that <laughs> we found out this weekend that our daughter and her husband and our four granddaughters are moving to Florida and they're leaving this coming weekend. He's relocating, has new work down there. And anyway, it was very quick. And so we have them with us right now, um, the twins and Kai and Kels and Carrie and Timmy. And so it's been a so Liz busy, is a little busy. <laughs> it's yeah. been a busy few days. And in fact, um, Carrie's coming over to pick me up in Rick's car when we're done, but, um, Oh, where did I get off on that tangent? Let's see. <laughs> it was about the bread and having two people versus four. And then, oh my gosh. It It'll come disappeared. to you. Anyway, um, the girls definitely want me to set them up with some stitching before they go. Yeah. So I promised, I even said that I could do a mom mom's uh, stitchy box once a month and send them a new project to work Aww, on. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah, so I think I'm going to do that. That'll help them build up their little stash of ideas of things to do and um, yeah. give me something to, to send their way. I always love to... When I was in college, my mom used to send me care packages. Yeah. They were awesome. I loved them. Um, so that would be fun. They get to look ahead at that. Mm -hmm. But here is one of them. I didn't realize there were two of these little birds. This is the first one. Isn't that cute? Yeah, that is cute. And that one is by... Pretty. Wow. Panochka. Mm. But I cannot pronounce her name. Um, probably be better I didn't try. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other one I is like... the little stitcher. That's yeah. the one that caught my attention. Yeah. 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 And then I saw the other one across from it. This is just a Christmas robin. Um, and this is Laura Romola. And that is so cute. And they're same. Whoops. Me got that a little bit closer. You're kind of far away there. I was yeah. just going to cover that oh, pattern. Oh, gotcha. You got it? I you think so. Her up. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I'll just drop everything. Drop everything? Take that over. <laughs> yeah, I like that one a lot. That's really pretty. That is cute. That'd be cute, the two of them mm -hmm. together. Yeah, that's pretty. Thank you. So, anyway, we were very fortunate we got the time in because it was a, a feat. Mm -hmm. With all the busyness going on. Yes. But it's been fun. My husband just got back in Colorado. He was away for two weeks. So it's good to have him home. And then fair week is next week. Unbelievable. So that's going to be real. I know. Can you believe it already? It's been a year. Yeah. Gosh. Oh, so who's being <sighs> shown this year? Who's The two pigs and Memphis. Memphis. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. I have not even gone downstairs to get out my fall stuff yet. No? Nope. Need to do that. I still have outside stuff to do, but did you see all of our pumpkins in our front yard? I did not notice. When Rick and I pulled up, we were catching up on what, with, with everybody here, it was like the first minute to catch up on schedules for the rest yeah. of the week, and I wasn't yeah. even looking. We, um, we harvested our pumpkin field, so I'm placing all of mine around that I'm going to keep and then I'll take the rest to the shop and sell them. Okay. I saw a person I took Ivan for his visit last week um, at the vets. The parking area at our vets, you pull in off the main street and then it's just one long row of parking aimed at the neighboring yard. And I saw this man and he had his truck backed in and then he had a couple of saw horses set up and he was putting together what looked like fence sections. And I thought, oh, they're gonna put up some kind of a divider and then it'll be more private for them. I thought, I wonder how many dogs have gone into their property to do their business over the years since they're right there at the... And then I realized, no, he was setting up a display for pumpkins. He had these two huge boxes that were like five feet deep yeah. And five feet square filled with pumpkins in the back of his truck. Yeah. And he was setting up 
um, it was like his point of purchase display. He was setting up little sections of fencing to stack them oh, against. Cool. And he was getting ready to sell them, I guess. That's awesome. Yep, that was like, wow, lots of pumpkins. Well, next weekend in Conestoga, they're shutting down Main Street because that's that'll be the, the festival. The okay. Fest. So that's always fun to go to. Up in Maine this time of year when all the fairs get going, it's fun too because even the smaller neighboring communities seem to have them. Yeah. something going on. I know. Every weekend is so much fun. And then you have your excuses for more when you have the Apple Festival. Oh, definitely. The, yeah. Ours is the year you and I are away this year, the one in Willow Street, the Apple Festival at Beams Chapel. <gasps> no, it is. It's, yeah. it's when we're... October 12th while we're down at oh, Salty Oh, is it really? Yep. Yeah. I just saw the posted sign and I thought, oh gosh, I don't remember it being that weekend when we were... I didn't think so either. I think they must have adjusted it. Oh man, I made out so good when you were there. Uh, yes, <laughs> they you had did. a silent auction and everybody but me was silent. <laughs> I mean, oh my gosh, that was the best. Gosh. Yeah. What was the big thing you got that weekend? I couldn't believe. I got believe. so much. Well, my absolute favorite thing was the painting. That's it. I actually was able to get, it was an artist from nearby in Coreyville, and they painted the original Beams Church. Beams Church is one of the oldest churches, or it is the oldest church in our area. The original church still stands. The inside looks exactly as it did back then. I mean, it is so cool. And they open up the original church whenever they have special events. Yeah. Just amazing to be in that building. Um, so they worship, and they have their church in the, the newer building they build out closer to the street, but I got an original painting from an artist, and it's the it's the old Beams Church with like the graveyard in the background. It, the colors are just gorgeous. It's so muted and so soft and beautiful. And after I got it home, and the frame is perfect, I mean, it's just beautiful. What a, what a find. Mm -hmm. It was. And um, nobody bid on it except me. Really? I couldn't believe it. I oh. could not believe it, but like hardly anybody was there at that time for the silent auction to go off. Mm -hmm. So I got all kinds of stuff, but mm -hmm. when I got it home and I showed uh, McKenna, I said, isn't this beautiful? I love it. And she goes, wow, I love that. And I love that Jesus is up in the corner. And I said, what? <laughs> and she goes, mom, look, the, I didn't even notice it because the whole top of the painting is like clouds. But then when you really look and you study one corner of the painting, they actually painted in Jesus' face, but you don't see it because it just looks like it's a cloud. Oh, wow. It was the coolest thing ever to realize that that was there. So that was my favorite find that day. Huh. That was so neat. And they signed it, you know, on the back. It's actually numbered and it's signed by the artist. Wow. Yeah. And it hangs in my bedroom. That was, a, that was a fun little Apple Festival. The first time I went, I had just moved into the neighborhood, and this chapel Deb's talking about, I look at the chapel across my yard and across our street, and it's a huge uh, farm field down into the farm that actually owns the house we rent. Yeah. And then the cemetery's off to the side, and we can watch the festival from our house. Yeah, in fact, last year, <laughs> <laughs> McKenna and I were there and Liz wasn't there. So we, we stood um, right on the, the edge of the hill and I said, give Liz a call. So McKenna <laughs> called Liz and, and said, we see you. <laughs> so um, I can see all the goodies and things going on. But the first year, the lady who lived across the street and she just passed away two weeks ago. Um, she had lived in that neighborhood since 1960 with her husband mm. and raised their family. And she was uh, one of the leaders in the um, organization that maintains and supports Beams Chapel. And so she often was one of the speakers at events about things that they were doing and how they were maintaining the original facility. But she took us there on a private tour showed us the whole inside mm -hmm. but then she told us about the apple festival and how they raised their funds and then she told us about the apple dumplings at the apple uh -huh. festival and oh my word yeah. those you could make a meal well that's off the thing. one of those dumplings yeah any of those like festivals and fairs mm -hmm. oh my goodness you eat so well yep and they would have i think they had 
in the main tent, it was chicken corn soup and crackers, and they might have had something else to go yeah, with it. Yeah, they had hot dogs, they had hamburgers, like meal-wise, you mean? Uh, yeah. But then, and then all the finish, goodies, yeah. <laughs> you go to the dessert table. Yep. And, oh, man, it was so good. <laughs> I took Kylie there when she was about, ooh, maybe three, four. She does not remember that, though. No? No, I was mm -hmm. talking to her about it. Oh, a couple of weeks ago. She didn't remember. Mm -hmm. But the food is good. Yes. Well, this was short and sweet, but I'm so sorry. I have to cut this short, shorter than normal because I have to go get Logan from school. With transportation. Yeah. And then Carrie's coming to pick me up. And yes. Evening's about to commence. Yes, that's right. But... We At least will. we got a little bit of time together and we will see you all in our next video. Yes. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> and as always, share the show, join the work. work. See you soon. Bye bye.